Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Effie, and I'm an engineer in the Govi project team. And today we're going to continue discussing about our options under the loading external data sources section in the discovery section uh, of Primo VE. Um, in the previous section, we see how to set and run a basic import profile based on the Dublin Core XML format. And we heavily used the, um, the Primo VE presets that are available um, for the Dublin Core uh, type XML. And basically, um, we didn't need to teach Primo VE anything uh, regarding the data is going to expect. In this session, we will uh, see more about um, the normalization rules that we can use uh, for uh, loading external XML. And we will need to see, or, or we will uh, teach Primo uh, what data to expect and how to process it to something that is familiar for him and he could then load and at the end of it, a display for our end user. So let's go to the next slide. So here are the different stages that we're going, that we will uh, go through uh, today at this session. Uh, at the first stage, we will see how to set a generic XML normalization rule. Then we will see how to test this generic XML normalization rule and see indeed if the outcome is the expected outcome. Uh, and, if, and if not, uh, we will need to get back <laughs> to the editor and see exactly what we missed. Then we will create a normalization rule process. We will need to create it in order to then make our import profile um, use it. So once we will create the normalization rule process, then it will be available in our import profile configurations. After, after that, we will have a quick review on the different options that we have in our in import profile uh, edit but, uh, pages. In the last time, we saw what is available for us when we are using a Dublin core record or when we try to load the Dublin core record, this time we will see what we have, what options we have when we try to load a generic XML um, record. Then uh, I just gathered a few, um, a few samples or examples of different uh, rules that will, could be useful for anyone uh, interesting in um, loading uh, generic XML to his system. And maybe they could be, let's say, building blocks or something that he could start uh, and start to work uh, from that on, from this place on. And then at the end, we will have some time for any questions that might uh, raise during this session. So let's begin. As mentioned in our previous, uh, session, we're going to click on the Alma configuration. Then we'll go to discovery. This is the place where all our Primo VE configurations are located. And we're going to focus today on the loading external data source um, configurations and different options that we have here. So let's go to our Alma. Here, open the Alma configurations. Then we'll go to discovery. And under the loading external data sources, we will click on the first option. The first option will be to create a normalization rules for the external data source. This will be our first station. Uh, for this journey. 
So as we can see, the all familiar MD editor is opened, is the same MD editor that we know. Under File, we will select New, and we'll go all the way to the bottom. Here we will see two options that we have under normalization rules. Number one is DC. This is in case we are loading a DC record and we want to maybe use something that is a bit different than what we already have as a preset in Primo VE. For example, if there is something that is not exactly the double core structure and is part of your data or any anything else. Um, another example that I can think about is if you want to add a local field um, or create a local field from your Dublin core data, this will be the place to set this normalization rule. Today we will go and select the normalization rule, the XML option, because we want to load an XML file. Now, one thing that I want to um, to note here is that when I say Dublin core versus XML, if you if you wish to use if you wish to load a um, Dublin core record um, as a generic XML, you can also do that because if because Dublin core itself is coming in an XML format. So so when I say XML, it means any XML that, that you might load, as long as there is some sort of a consistency and some sort of a pattern that you that all the records that you're going to load are based on, uh, this is this be the place for it. So again, let me just give it a name. Let's call it just for this presentation XML in the description. Let's call it port XML. Okay. And of course, I need to select the share and enabled. Once I will click on save, I will open um, an empty MD editor uh, page will be opened here. And here I could uh, paste or write any XML rules. Now, because I already created an XML, uh, sorry, a normalization rule uh, for this session, let us have a look at, the, at what I already created. So, do you want to save? No. Okay, so let us see what I already created for us. So here under normalization rules, shared, I already created FEXML. Let's click here on edit. Please let me refresh the page. Oh, here we go. Great. So we have here our code for this XML. Again, the record that I'm going to load uh, in this session will be a Dublin core record, but I want you to notice that the information that we're going to translate it to will be to a Dublin core or some, uh, to something that is Dublin Core. So at the end, the record that will be loaded to, uh, to Primo VE will be a Dublin Core format. So if you notice, every, every rule here is set to DC dot, in this case, it's language or DC relations, creator, and so on. This is something you need to keep in mind that 
anything that I'm taking will be at the end translate to vc dot something. Okay, so let's say that we're now happy with what we created. Our next step will be to save and test what we just did. Now, we have two ways to get to the test page. The first option is to click here. And the second option, again, is under discovery. And it will be our second station here in the loading external data source options. We have here the test normalization rule. Right after the uh, set normalization rules, we have here the test option. So again, we have two ways to get to this page. Now, in the test page, the record will be a generic XML. I have a way to, um, to upload a file. And let's select the file. Here I'll click on upload. And here is the XML file that I just uploaded. As I mentioned before, it is a Dublin core, but still it's an XML. Now let us click on run test. Oh, before that, let's select the relevant normalization rule, of course. In this case, it's FEXML, and we will click on run test. We'll see that the outcome is satisfying, that everything is relatively um, logic and, and all the relevant field that you wanted to display are built correctly. In case it's not, then you will need to go back to the normalization rule, edit it, and then go back to testing and confirming that, and confirm that everything is okay. So we're back to the first page of Alma, just to show you again where we're at. If you select discovery, the discovery option here in the quick menu, you'll see that the only option available for you is loading external data source. In, in loading external data sources is to edit uh, and create an import profiles. So this is the reason why we need to go to the configuration page and in the configuration page, we will have the different stations. So after we created normalization rule and test it and see that everything is okay and working as expected, we would like to make this normalization rule available for our import profile. In order to make it available for our import profile, we need to set a process task. In here, in our process task, we can see that I already created a process, but let's click here on add a process just to see the different stages that we need to go through in order to set it. So we'll click on add a process. In the business unit, we will select the discovery bib record. It's already available here because it's been used in the past for this user. And in a type, we have, again, the option to select a Dublin core in case we want to use a Dublin core record and translate it uh, using the Dublin core, uh, from Dublin core to Dublin core. Uh, or we have the option for a generic XML. I will click here on next. Our next station will be to give a general name to the process. Again, give it a description so anyone else using the system will understand exactly what this process is. The status will be, of course, active. We will click here on next. Here, we will 
basically get the task for this. It will be a generic XML normalization. This is the uh, this is the section where the normalization rule is sit in, and again clicking on next, we will select the specific normalization rule that we created for this task. Once I will click on save, I will create a new task. But as we seen earlier, uh, I already created it, so it's already displayed here under the normalization process task. There it is. OK. So let's see again what are the different stages that we already passed. We created a normalization rule. Then we tested it and saw that the outcome of our work is correct or as expected and there isn't any surprise or, or that and see that everything is working correctly. Afterwards, we attached the normalization rule that we created to a process task. Um, then this way, we made it available or visible for our discovery import profile. Our next step will be to set a discovery import profile uh, and use these, uh, these configurations that we just did. So let's go here. As mentioned before, uh, I already created an import profile, but let's click here on Add New Profile and see exactly what are the different uh, parameters that we need to set into it. So it's going to be under Discovery, Next. The profile name again, it's important. So in this case, it will be import profile description, some description to help others understand what this process covers or what what is the outcome of the process. And same all for all different labels that we want to put here. So now, here in most cases, it will be other. Here we have the option to load the files directly from our PC, use an FTP server or an OAI call. This is how we want to load the data into the system. The format of the file will be an XML. And in here, we have the option between Dublin Core, generic XML, or Mark. We will select the generic XML option. Now, here on the bottom, we have the spl file splitting parameters. So we will, these three are mandatory, and let's uh, see what we need to load into them. Here, I, the root element tag is basically the tag that covers all the records within the XML. In most cases, it's going to be a list of records uh, in our example sorry <laughs> it's going to be list of records so let's put it here the record element tag is the the xml tag that covers one item within the xml for that i have here my xml example so we'll see that this sample is start with record and it's also the end of it. And everything within these two tags is all the metadata that is present, that is um, describing this specific record. So let's put it here as well. And the last element that we need is to tell Primo where we can find 
the identifier field for this specific record. So he could uh, differ between the different records within the, uh, within the file. So in our case, the path is record, header, and identifier. So if we'll go back to all my XML example here, we will see that under the record we have header, and within the header we have the identifier for this specific record. Now, if I'll select instead of upload files, I will select, of course, the OAI or the FDP or option. Another section will be opened for the uh, for the scheduling of the process, and also the for in this case will be the OAI details that we will need to load in order to load this record. Okay, in the previous section, uh, I meant in the previous, sorry, in the previous session in part one, I mentioned that we don't need to load any information to here in the norm, under normalizations because the normalization rules for Dublin core records is already preset in Alma. In this case, we will need to uh, inform Primo what normalization rules to use because he don't know what exactly, what XML is going to expect. So we need to help him with the normalization rule that we just created. So let's select the relevant process that we created. In this case, it was EFI and click on next. There is where we set the uh, URLs um, from to link between the record and to the original system. In a nutshell, it could be a template, some sort of a template that is, uh, is for in most examples, it will be some URL with the record ID parameter at the end of it, or it could be a static URL uh, to a gen more generic system uh, that you want to link the record back to from Primo back to the original system. Okay, now, if I will click on save, I will create a new import profile, but again, because we already created it, I'll just click on cancel. Okay, let's see what we have. So, again, the same options as I mentioned before in the, in the previous session. We have a way to run it. So if I'll click on run, uh, I will get to the page. If it was, uh, for example, an OAI, I will see some information and then I will confirm it. In this case, we selected upload the file. So I will need to select a file from my PC and then the run option will be available. Same for your history or reports. It's, these options are also available here, as uh, as I as we saw in the previous session. And if I'll click here on Edit, again I will see the same options that I saw earlier in the wizard, but it's uh, but it's between different tabs. So. So here there is the, the general, the general uh, profile details. Um, here, for example, if I see that the records are not loading and I expect it's uh, probably something related to the file splitting, this is the place to fix it. Or if I set the new normalization rules that I want to apply to my records, this is the place to switch between normalization rules and, and set the new uh, updates to my records and the same with the delivery. If something was changing the data and there is a new template, for example, this is the place to maintenance it. So this is a quick view regarding how to set a generic XML profile um, in the, uh, in the Primo, for the Primo VE. Uh, and now let's go to the next. 
part of my of the presentation and just have a quick a very quick and uh, review on uh, different uh, normalization rules that we can use again uh, this just to help you i hope a little bit give you a little bit better understanding and maybe some um, jumping position to move forward with your own project so the first few records that we're going to see is DC XML to DC normalization rule example. This is regards the DC normalization rules that we saw earlier. Let me just show it here re real quick. So these options are relevant in case you use an organization rules DC. Again, if you have a DC record and you just want to change or tweak a few things in it. The first example is, as mentioned, to create a local field in your DC. And once I set it for this example, it's local one. So from that point on, if you set a local field, uh, Local field one in Primo VE will be attached to this specific uh, Dublin Core record or any other external uh, data source record because discovery dot local one or dot local fifteen um, is uh, is you can be used for a local record in case of external data sources. The next step is again to move information in this case from description to subject so check if description exists or information within description exists and if so move it to subject in here we want to remove uh, the english language for some reason but still I just wanted to display it as an example. So if the, uh, if the parameter within DC language equals English, then remove it. Okay, in this case, we're going to an XML. So yeah, here we're just doing a very simple thing. We're just copying the title. So go and look for tag called title and then copy it or copy its contact content into dc title pretty straightforward um, we can also set something so in this case i just want to set the the uh, string xbox in a dc type i can do that as well Here is the same thing. If uh, if the record identifier and then contains the tag images, then set image in DC type. Let's go to another example here. In this case, it's the same idea. Take uh, what, take the information with. Uh, if you see the the string book, set it set book in DC type. Here we want to just copy the the, the content of the uh, of this XML tag to subject. And in here I just wanted to add this example to show you that you can also use different conditions. So for this for so for this if i have 558 or the string lgh again these are made up uh, strings just to show you the the or option then do something completely different uh, set uh, set this field so again this is an also optional for you by the way um one, one more thing that i wanted to mention is that 
the rules, let me maybe go to uh, something else. Your previous, uh, here we go. So here we go. So if you notice, the, there are two parts of the rule. Part number one is find something. And once you find it, do some action, okay? So the first part, the find something part, is based on the XPath technology or the XPath uh, protocols. And then the other part, the action part, is set or based on the familiar Drew that we know from Alma. So you can see that the language here is very uh, same as, as one that I assume that is very familiar for you, such as set, copy, or what we have else, move, and so on. Okay, I think I pretty much uh, covered it. Um, any questions? Actually, two questions. The first oh, one great. was, uh, is this, is this going to be recorded and will we share the slides? The answer to that is yes. I'm going to process that and try to get that information out to you uh, by the end of the day. And then the uh, other question is, uh, must the record element be a direct child of the root element, or is it okay if it appears somewhere in the node tree? We get back to the uh, to the XML here, just to maybe make it a little bit more visual. Yeah. So, are we talking about the splitting? Splitting. Oh, splitting. Okay. The record element, I think it it have to be part of the um, of the root element. In this case, list of records, because because if you think about it, it it's look it's look for coverage. So so once you tell him list of records, then he will go to the next parameter and look for the specific records within these parameters, within these borders. Um, yeah, but, but I think it's also be best if, if uh, the guy that asked us uh, will send us an example and, and just to make us certain that we are on the same page and for him to get a confirmed answer about that as well. So I will send it to the GoVE. So we could send you a more detailed uh, uh, answer regarding it. But on a nutshell, yeah, the the, um, the file splitting elements are, let's say, borders. So you first set the um, the biggest border is that where are the list of records starts and ends, and then you're going to a deeper resolution of where a specific record within this list of records start and end. And of course, the identifier is just to give an ID for each one of these records within the list of records border. Okay, uh, did you get another question in? Uh, when running tests on my XML norm rules, mm -hmm. I, sometime, I sometimes get long errors. Can, mm. you give an, can you give an example of errors and how to understand slash decode them? Oh, I think that's a good idea for, for a session. <laughs> but in most cases, it's maybe words that are missing. A lot of time, it's, it's syntax things. For example, you missed out the end, the end word, because this is something that is pretty common when you copy things from place to place. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, again, if, if you see, if you have a specific issue, just send it to the GoVE. And in general, I think, yeah, I think we will need a whole new discuss uh, or whole new session for this as well. I don't have any other questions. Um, Effie, mm -hmm. if, if you want to make some concluding remarks, uh, we can wrap it up. I hope, I hope I made things a little bit clearer. If you have any questions, please use the um, GoVE email and we'll be more than happy to reply. Um, and again, uh, give it a try and see and see and, and test it and uh, 